Okay, um, I'm going to talk, uh, just do a little voiceover of the lessons that we did about um, how to compare poetry for your uh, literature AQA English exam. Uh, in the lessons we were learning about how to compare two poems effectively, aiming for detailed, sustained analysis, but also remembering that it's comparative. And we talked about how we do that, how we do that well. First of all, I tried to get across the sense that of how important it is that you must plan, that, that you must think before you start to write, that these ideas won't just uh, appear out of your head on the page, and that you need to look at the, the question, see what the key words are, and then find a points of difference and similarity if you possibly can. The example we looked at was compare how the poets present the experience of soldiers, the experience of soldiers, that being the key idea, uh, in bayonet charge, um, and in one other poem from the conflict cluster, and we decided to go for Come On, Come Back. Now the first thing obviously you've got to do, which I won't focus too much on here, is you've got to come up with your ideas, uh, your points of comparison, and we think the best thing to do is uh, focus on some ideas or themes that are similar or different, and then that will lead you towards writing about language and structure, not starting with both poems use imagery or both poems use adjectives. Uh, I mean, there's loads of things you could write about here. Sim a couple of simple things. Um, we talked about both in both poems, the experience of war seems frightening, for example. Uh, it seems confusing. I mean, you'll see some uh, examples in a minute. Um, uh, but you, there's much more subtle points. We talked about the role of nature in both poems, uh, that the experience of, of fighting and combat is located in highly kind of natural pastoral environments. Uh, and we talked about the significance of that. But my point now is that you've got to come up with your ideas before you can start to write. This video, however, is mainly about um, how you actually construct a paragraph. Uh, skilled work, work that will get you up to about a C, is going to have a linked idea in the, your points. It's going to use quotations for each poem. You won't get anywhere near a C if you don't do that. And explain the evidence and compare. Excellence, exploring excellence, is about having a better idea, a more subtle, a more precise linked idea, uh, using better quotations, relevant, precise, more interesting quotations, and explaining and analysing with increasing depth, sophistication, detail, and interest. And I'll show you how, well, how we went about trying to, to do that. Okay, first of all, we looked at a very simple example of how you structure this, this sort of response. Um, pause now if you want to read it through or I'll take you through it um, anyway so the first bit the, so the soldiers experiences are similar and show the reader that conflict is frightening now there is a topic sentence which makes a comparative point in both the conflict is frightening it's a pretty simple point but it's a point in bayonet charge it says and then we've got a quotation hearing bullets smacking the belly out of the air that's the uh, the quote that's used that line remember shows that there's a, a change in uh, a change of line in the poem um, <coughs> next then uh, explanation this shows that it was terrifying to hear the bullets flying around him very simple point evidence explain it's not very good it won't get you a high mark but as a basis that's basically what, what you're trying to do but much better and in a minute I'll show you how to do it better as a structure this kind of works this is like the experience in uh, come on come back with she fears and cries ah me why am I here this shows that the war is frightening because she's crying and alone point evidence explain again um, both and then a bit of comparison at the end a bit more direct comparison both poems are similar because they show that war that war I should say is terrifying um, and makes people afraid and upset okay so that is essentially how you do it PEE -E, P -E -E, and comparison making sure I suppose that this bit is a comparative uh, point that you're identifying something that's similar or different in both poems <coughs> And that here you've got a, um, a comparative link. This is like the experience. And then this bit at the end, of course, is your um, comparison again. All right, so let's look at a better example and think about why this is better. Okay, the soldier's experiences are similar and show the reader, it should be, shouldn't it? Scroll and show. Show the reader that conflict is confusing and distressing for soldiers. Now, that is a bit better. Just, just assume that, this, that when it says shows, it, it means show. Um, but 
let's think about it. The soldiers experience the similar and show the reader that conflict is confusing and distressing. Now, why is that better? Because I suppose to say that war is frightening, like our first example, it's really kind of obvious, isn't it? We know war is, is frightening. To say it's confusing and distressing is a bit more subtle, a bit more precise, so it's better. In the second stanza of Bayonet Charge, the soldier asks, in what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations uh, was he the hand pointing that setting? And you've got a really good quotation there. You've also got a bit more of a, a better introduction to the quotation in the second stanza of, rather than just in ba Bayonet Charge, it says, okay, his experience has made him question his place in the world and Hughes makes him seem insignificant when compared to the universe and ideas such as countries, nations. I think they prefer nations there. The alliteration of, cr of cold clockwork reinforces a sense of harsh brutality. So here, it's better because, look, it's just got more detail in, hasn't it? It's, it's more um, developed analysis. It's explaining why it makes him seem insignificant when compared to the universe. And there's an attempt also to comment on language a little bit. The alliteration of cold clockwork reinforces a sense. So it's, it's got a better interpretation and it's got an attempt to comment on language. So it's better. It goes on. This is like the experience of Vaudevu in Come On, Come Back, where she fears and cries, me, why am I here? Okay. Here she's upset as she's crying and the questioning shows that the soldier is frightened. Now that's better again. The questioning shows the soldier is frightened and shows what a bad state of mind she's in. This makes them similar because the soldiers are in a horrific situation that shows how harmful war can be and suggests that war is brutal for soldiers who have first-hand experience. Now what I'm hoping is that you can see why that paragraph is better than that paragraph. Even though it's pretty much the same in structure, you've got your point, evidence, explain, your comparative point again, link back, uh, this is like, um, point, evidence, exp uh, explain, and then this bit at the end about comparison. You see in this example, I've in this one I've separated it out, in this one I didn't, really it's up to you whether you do or you don't, but it's better largely because it's got a better point, if we go back to our success criteria, it's got a better point, a more precise point, not just frightening, it's distressing and confusing. It's got better quotations and it explains in a bit more detail. It's not amazing, I have to say. It's not, um, it probably, I don't know, probably get you on a good day if you wrote in a similar style, probably get you a top, a, a, maybe a B um, there, I think, probably. Um, depends what the rest of your essay was like. But it's sort of B standard work. Um, so let's look at a really good example. And again, thing, and even though the, the structure of this is very similar, again, why is this better? Okay, the soldiers' experiences are portrayed as similar as war makes them question their existence on the battlefield, and this leads the reader to question the nature of conflict itself. Now, if you think about that um, as an opening, why is it better? Because it's engaging with the poems on a more precise, focused, interesting and sophisticated level. First one said war is frightening. Second one said war is confusing and distressing. This one says war makes them question their existence. And this leads the reader to question the nature of conflict itself. So you can see, can't you, that that's a more kind of sophisticated um, idea. Let's go on. In bayonet charge, so that's a better point. In bayonet charge, the second stanza slows and shows how the soldier almost stops and asks, in what cold clock work of the hands, etc., etc. Um, I think we need a full stop here. His experience has made him. So there's your your quote. Okay, fine. We've got point evidence, and now we need our explanation. His experience has made him question his place in the cold clock work, and Hughes skillfully makes him seem small and separate, both in the universe with stars and the nation he's fighting for. The harsh alliterative C emphasising the brutality and emotional coldness of war. Quite a long sentence, isn't it? But nevertheless, the quality of the analysis is better. It's better expressed. The harsh alliterative, it's not just saying the alliteration makes it seem. It's pointing out that the, the C sounds are, are sort of more, more harsh in tone. Um, it's talking about how the image functions. It makes him seem small 
and sort of alone and separate. Um, so it's a, it's better quality analysis if I highlight this bit. And then also it goes on. It says also, so they think, okay, so let's squeeze this quotation. What else can I get out of it? What else is interesting about the quote? The caesura, which is the, the pause, uh, creates a pause and forces the reader to also question the logic of war with the soldier. Similarly, okay, so there's there's an attempt to comment on sort of line structure there in what cold clockwork of the stars and nations was hit. So there's where your caesura functions there in these in the, because the, the alliteration slows it down and creates that pause in what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations. <coughs> okay, similarly, the experience. So again, I hope you can see that this is the same. Um, point evidence explained, as in the other two examples that we've looked at, in bayonet charge, uh, so there we go, but you've got a really developed explanation, you've got a better point. Similarly, the experience of Vaudeville in Come On Come Back shares this confusion with ARMY, see this nice little link there, with ARMY, why am I here? Here, the questioning is more direct, you need a full stop and a, and a cap uh, new sentence there questioning is more direct as the soldier is frightened and crying. The use of free and direct speech in the interjection R is more intimate and shows the turmoil of her black mind. Nice sort of quoting around the poem here, showing that you, you're not just looking at this quote, you're bringing in quotes from elsewhere in the poem. <coughs> the use of questioning in both poems shows the personal <coughs> mental anguish caused by the soldier's experiences, both in the heat of battle and post-battle, after the battle. Okay, so you've got what what you becomes good here is that you've got this. All of this stuff then is a much more developed uh, commentary or discussion of what of this linked point, this idea of questioning. It's it's comparing the language in the poems as well. The use of questioning in the po in both poems shows the personal mental anguish caused by the soldiers' experiences, both in the heat of battle and post battle. Both poets use structure to allow time, so questions, to allow time for the reader to also question the purpose of soldiers on battlefields. Furthermore, the questioning from the soldiers as they experience conflict shows the futility of war. An answer is not given to their questions. This is a good point. It says it's using questions and it's really following the logic through, thinking more deeply. An answer is not given and the intensely personal experiences depicted make this scene more harrowing to the reader. This questioning could be seen as a rhetorical cry against war and suggests the logic of sending people to fight in the past or in future wars is deeply flawed. Um, so there we are. You've got better quotations, quotations sort of dotted around. You've got um, significant analysis of each uh, alliteration on its own. So you've got separate analysis. But you've also got this really detailed comparison going through, really detailed, thoughtful comparison going through. So basically, that's how you do it. What I want you to try and understand then is how this, the structure of those paragraphs is the same for each one. It's still basically point evidence explain, point evidence explain, compare. Um, <coughs> this is a bit better because it's a bit more detailed and the point's better. This is much better in a sort of a star standard, I suppose. Um, because it's got a really interesting and thoughtful point, um, it's got really developed analysis, and, and crucially, it's got really developed comparison as well. Good.